Welcome to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance, a ministry of the Sunday School Publishing Board, where we focus on teaching, engaging, application, and learning for teachers and students. I will be sharing highlights and key points from the Adult Faith Pathway Bible Study Sunday School book and the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary based on the International Lesson Series. This week, we continue our spring quarter of Sunday School lessons. This quarter study is examining our faith. In this quarter, we explore the fullness of faith as a response to God's desire to be in relationship with us. To be faithless is to turn away from God, to put trust in something or someone other than God. The lessons for this quarter ask these questions. Is your faith steadfast? Are you contending for the faith? The lessons of this quarter guide the learners to a reaffirmation of their confidence in God because without faith, it is impossible to please him. This week, we begin our study in Unit 2, The Measure of Faith. There are four lessons in this unit drawn from the books of Luke and Matthew to discuss the range of Christian faith. In this week's lesson, Luke cites four friends who went through various obstacles to get their sick friend to Jesus for healing. And when Jesus saw their faith, he forgave and healed the paralytic man. Get your Sunday School book, Bible, notepad, pen, or device, and follow along as we take a glimpse into this week's Sunday School lesson. Now let's get started with this wonderful lesson. The lesson title for this week, April the 7th, is Helping a Friend in Need. And this is the title in the adult book. The title in the Sunday School commentary is The Faith of Four Friends. The background scripture is Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26, and the print passage is Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26 as well. The key verse in this week's lesson is, Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat, through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. And that's Luke chapter 5, verses 18 and 19, the New International Version. Here are three questions to consider and reflect on as we go through this week's lesson. Question number one, why were the four men so determined to get their paralyzed friend to Jesus? Question number two, what moved Jesus to help the paralytic man? And number three, what two things did Jesus do for the paralyzed man? Let's take a brief look at the lesson biblical context. This week's lesson is in the book of Luke. Luke was a Greek and Gentile Christian. He was a physician and Paul's companion for several years. And he authored the gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. Luke is the only known Gentile biblical writer in the New Testament. The book of Luke was written to Theophilus, which means one who loves God. It was also written to Gentiles and people everywhere. Of the four Gospels, this is the most comprehensive Gospel written. Luke's Gospel includes several episodes from Jesus' life that the other Gospels omit. Luke is the only account that provides a detailed report of Jesus' birth, John the Baptist's conception, and anything about Jesus' boyhood. Luke portrays Jesus as the compassionate Son of God. Luke provides a beautiful portrait of our compassionate Savior's ministry. The purpose of Luke is to present an accurate account of the life of Christ and to present Christ as the perfect human and Savior. A consistent theme in Luke's gospel is Christ's compassion for those often 
branded as outcast in Israel and Gentiles, Samaritans, women, children, sinners, and tax collectors, and for the marginalized and social outcast in Jewish culture, and those branded as sinners. Luke shows that Jesus was indeed human and divine with a special love and concern for humanity. Luke chapter 5 is at the start of Jesus's ministry. Jesus had called his first disciples at the beginning of the chapter. In chapter 5 of Luke's gospel, Jesus teaches a crowd on the shore of Lake Gennesaret from a borrowed boat. The owners of the boat, who had just finished a night of unsuccessful fishing, received directives from the master, from Jesus, a carpenter, to try again. They did so, and the result of their obedience was a catch of fish so large they needed help from another boat and crew to draw it in. Simon Peter and the other fishermen helping him realized who Jesus was. Peter declared his sinfulness and Jesus called Simon and the others to follow him and become fishers of men, which they did. People were coming from the surrounding areas and all around to hear Jesus' teaching. Next, as recorded in Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 14, is Jesus' healing of a man who had leprosy. This report of which drew many others to Jesus for healing. The news of the remarkable healing of the leper became widely known. Luke Chapter 5, verse 15 reads, But now even more, the report about him went abroad, and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. And verse 16, But he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. The Lord eventually withdrew to the wilderness to pray. He returned to the city and drew yet another crowd to hear his teaching. While most came to listen to his teaching, some did come for healing. This leads to this week's lesson where four friends were coming for a healing, not for themselves, but for another, for a friend. Jesus had become so popular in this region that the men in the passage in this week's lesson had learned about him and believed that he had the power to heal their completely paralyzed friend. Jesus taught, preached, and healed the sick and brought hope to the desperate and discouraged. In this week's lesson, Jesus took note of the four friends who cared enough for a sick friend to overcome the obstacles blocking their friend from Jesus' presence to seek healing. Their willingness to endure inconvenience resulted in the friend's spiritual and physical wholeness. The lesson aims in this week's lesson are, number one, understand the importance of Christian friends in building up faith in Christ. Lesson aim number two, value the encouragement and support that you can offer to your friends in the faith. And lesson aim number three, seek to create habits of compassionate and faith-filled action. As we continue our glimpse into this week's lesson, I'm going to share two key points from each outline in the lesson text and expound some on each one. There are two outlines presented in the Adult Faith Pathway Sunday School book. The first lesson outline is Friendship Finds a Way, and that's Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. The second lesson outline is Friendship's Reward, and that's Luke chapter 5, verses 21 through 26. Let's begin our analysis of the biblical text with the first lesson outline, Friendship Finds a Way. Key point number one. Four men carried their friend to Jesus. In this outline, the emphasis is on the faith of the friends of the paralyzed man. Verse 17, and I'm reading from the New International Version, reads, 
One day, Jesus was teaching and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. At this point in Jesus's ministry, large crowds, including Pharisees and teachers of the law, followed Jesus everywhere. These leaders felt threatened because Jesus challenged their sincerity and because the people were flocking to him. As Jesus was teaching, there were Pharisees, religious leaders, and teachers of the law sitting by. Some of them had come from considerable distances from Judea and Jerusalem, as we read in the scripture. As Jesus's reputation and fame had spread, the religious leaders had begun watching him, watching him critically. These men were sitting by with critical eyes and critical hearts, ready to twist and pounce upon some words of Jesus. They were looking for an occasion to oppose Jesus. The Pharisees were devoted and zealous, but for many of them, religion was focused on an exact outward obedience to the law. And they believed that God only loved those that did as they did. They thought everyone was separated from the love of God except themselves. Although Jesus' focus was teaching, Luke writes that the spiritual ability to heal was working powerfully within him, as we read in verse 17b. Verse 18 reads, Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. Jesus's teaching is interrupted. While Jesus was teaching, four men brought a paralytic man on his bed, but could not lay him down because of the crowded room. The room was packed. His friends were determined to get him to Jesus. They carried their friend the entire way. Verse 19, when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went upon the roof and lowered him on his mat through the towels into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. Because of the crowded room, and they saw that they could not go through the front door, the friends of the paralyzed man had to lower him down through the roof. House roofs in first century Palestine were flat and usually made of clay mixed with straw and supported by beams and branches of trees. They had outside stairways that led up to the roof. These men carried their friend up the stairs to the roof where they took apart much of the mud and straw mixture as was necessary to lower the man in front of Jesus. The men's determination to get their friend before Jesus motivated them to go up on the roof remove some of the towels, lower him down in front of Jesus. The friends of the man who was paralyzed demonstrated the highest level of idea, friendship. Key point number two, the four friends believed that Jesus could and would heal their friend. Here, we clearly see the determination and the faith displayed by the friends of the paralytic man. These friends were determined to do for their friend what he could not do for himself. We must also have faith that Jesus can and will meet the needs of others whom we bring to him. It wasn't the paralytic man's faith that impressed Jesus, but the faith of his friends. It was the friends' faith that moved Jesus to help the man who was paralyzed. Verse 20, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Jesus responded by first forgiving the man's sins instead of healing him. Jesus responded to their collective faith by first forgiving the paralytic man's sins. It is important to note that Jesus, first of all, healed the man spiritually. Jesus knew 
what the man's real need was and what his greatest need was. What good was it if the man had two whole legs and walked right into hell with them? Jesus addressed the man's greatest need, the man's sinful condition. Only God can solve our sin problem. The scripture says that Jesus looked at them and saw their faith. Their faith could be seen. Their actions showed their affection and concern for the friend and their faith in Jesus's power, in Jesus's healing power. Jesus recognized that the men's faith motivated them to act as they did. Luke shows that Jesus had the authority to forgive sins and heal physically. Jesus responded to their faith and healed the man. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The second lesson outlined, friendship's reward. Key point number one, Jesus is falsely accused of blasphemy. Verse 21 reads, The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus told the paralytic his sins were forgiven, the Jewish leaders accused Jesus of blasphemy, accused him of claiming to be God or to do only what God can do. The religious leaders had no compassion for the paralyzed man. They just wanted to trap Jesus. The Pharisees and scribes questioned Jesus' authority to forgive sin, as we just read in verse 21. In Jewish law, blasphemy was punishable by death. The Jewish leaders did not understand that Jesus is God and that he has God's power to heal both the body and the soul. Verse 22, Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Jesus omnisciently discerned their thoughts and asked why they were questioning his action in their hearts. Key point number two, Jesus knows our thoughts. He knows what we're thinking. Verse 23, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? Jesus challenged them in two ways. First, he asked, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? If Jesus possessed divine power to heal, and he did, and he does, then he also has the authority to forgive sin. Verse 24, but I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. Jesus often referred to himself as the son of man. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 14 declares, the son of man. In verse 14 it reads, he was given authority, glory and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. To validate his point and authority, Jesus commanded the paralytic to get up, pick up his mat, and to go home. Verse 25. Immediately, he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home, praising God. The man's healing was instantaneous, and he responded appropriately by glorifying God, by praising God. Verse 26, everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. The crowd praised God as they witnessed a miracle that defied their expectations and seemed impossible. In summary, we see in this week's lesson 
that God honors the faith of those who seek to bring others to Christ. This lesson challenges us to be concerned about others and their relationship with Christ and to be intentional in using our gifts, skills, and talents to help others. As we mature in Christ, his values become ours. Among these values are love, compassion, giving. Love expressed through friendships filled with compassion, faith, and sacrifice. That is, believing that God has the power to heal, deliver, and to set the captives free. The four friends in this week's lesson demonstrated friendship, love, and compassion. We see the caring determination of these four friends on behalf of a mutual friend in need. They were determined to get their friend to Jesus and believed that he would heal him. Because of his friends, the man was able to have an encounter with Jesus that resulted in spiritual and physical healing. God offers the same forgiveness given to the paralyzed man to all who believe. Our closing thought and question. As you reflect on this week's lesson, identify someone at home, on the job, or in your church or community who needs physical, emotional, or spiritual support. Question, how far are you willing to go to help a friend in need? In closing, thank you for tuning in to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. I hope this glimpse of this week's Sunday School Lesson is helpful to you as you prepare to study and teach God's Word. Don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe button. For additional information and resources, contact the Sunday School Publishing Board. Blessings to you until the next Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. We invite you to join us each week as we take a glimpse into the Sunday School Lesson. Subscribe now.